Now that Odin 3.0 is out of beta, we wanted to create new tutorials to support the new features as well as show off what can now be done with Odin. One of the biggest improvements is the newly implemented action and value resolver system that replaces the highly manual system used in earlier versions of Odin. For this video, we'll be creating a simple attribute that will make use of a value resolver and will color a field if a given condition is true. If you haven't made a custom attribute with Odin, you might want to check out our earlier video on doing just that. Check the link in the top right and in the description below. So to get started, our attribute will need two string fields, one for the color and a second for the test condition. Values for both of these will be set in a constructor. We then need to create a drawer for the attribute. Do note the namespaces that we've added to access all the needed classes and types. Inside the drawer, we'll override the draw property layout function. Then inside the function, we can find a Boolean to store the value of the condition. And for now, we'll just give it a temporary value as we'll come back to getting the actual value in a bit. Then if the condition is true, we'll define a color variable, once again, giving it a temporary value and then using Odin's push color function to color the property. We then call this.getNextDrawer to ensure that the value is drawn as it otherwise would have been drawn. Then we once again check the condition, and if it was true, meaning we pushed a color, we'll pop the color to stop coloring properties further down the inspector. We've got the basics set up, but now we need to actually get the color and condition values. To do this, we need to create two new variables, each of the type of value resolver. The first will have a generic argument of color, and the second of Boolean. We can then create instances of the resolvers by overriding the initialize function and calling value resolver.get, passing in the correct generic arguments, as well as the property and the strings for the color and condition from the attribute. For the color resolver, we can add a third argument, which is a fallback value. Otherwise, the resolver might return the default fallback color, which will have zero alpha and will appear transparent. With these instances created, we can then get rid of our default values for the condition and the color in the draw property layout function. And we can do this by calling get value on the corresponding value resolver. With this done, we can test our new attributes by creating a simple class with one variable and one method that will get called by that attribute. Do note that in this case, the function returns a Boolean. If we go back into Unity, we can test the functionality and we can see that as we type in the field, the color property toggles between the default color and the color we put into the attribute. Now this works, but there's no visual indication if the strings in the attribute can't be resolved. So let's fix that. To do this, we can call the function value resolver dot draw errors and give the two value resolvers as input parameters. If we then put any string that can't be resolved, we can see an error in the inspector explaining which string can't be resolved. All in all, that's pretty easy, which was the goal of the new resolver system. But there is one special case that's worth addressing before we end the video. That case is if you are trying to resolve a string into a string. This occurs with attributes such as title that take in a string which can be used as the title or that string can also be resolved to call a method or reference a property. In that case, we need to set up the value resolver just a bit different. Just like before, we can call value resolver.get and we can use a third optional attribute to set a default return value, or we can use the function get for string. Either way you choose, if you set the resolver up like this, in the case that you want to resolve the string into a method, field, or property, you'll need to prepend the string with a dollar sign like so. So there you go, pretty quick and easy to create a value resolver in Odin 3.0. Keep your eyes open for a future video on named values, which will be useful when using with value and action resolvers. And until next time, Happy game designing.